Hey, it's Marilla Manelli, and today I'm gonna show you how to do some balayage highlights along with a subtle money piece for her face frame. Now let's go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna start out by taking a V section right over that occipital and to the corner of the ears. And this is gonna be my very first section that I start with. Now I want to still keep a lot of depth going on, so we're going to just highlight on the top and not really focus on that underneath portion. For this project, I'm gonna be using Simply Blonde Clay Lightener at a one to two mixing ratio with 30 volume developer. So I am gonna be doing an open air process. Now what makes this technique really quick and easy is we're gonna be taking really chunky weaves throughout. So I'm just gonna split this section right in half. And I'm taking my sections pretty deep here. The more uneven this is, the more natural end result you're gonna have. I'm also using this really unique board because it has those little teeth on it and this is what's gonna help push up any of those like little baby hairs out of the way and it's also gonna help continue to make this rooted. I'm gonna focus my application more on these mids and ends first. And then I'm gonna start stroking up my product. So this is what's gonna give me that saturated or surface paint. And then down towards the bottom, I'm focused more on the saturated paint. So I'm gonna do the same exact thing on the other side. Just keeping in mind that I want a nice deep weave here and nice uneven chunkiness. Now, if you happen to not have this board, it's not a big deal. You could just do like one little tease to kind of compensate and still use a board or use your hands. It's completely up to you. But I like to really focus on saturating that mid zone and then stroking up my product. And I love how the lightener is just kind of gliding on really beautifully. So you kind of want to have like a nice flick of the wrist. And then a little tip here, if you really need to focus on saturating, is move the board down as you start to paint. So for my next section, I'm going to take a horizontal section. Now, the reason why I love doing this type of sectioning is because it's creating little pockets of triangles. And these pockets of triangles is what's gonna give me that depth right down here. So if you can envision this hair is just not gonna be touched whatsoever, but this is gonna veil right on over it, making those highlights really pop. So that's why I really like working in triangular sections like this. However, when you are weaving, I do pick up the entire piece. So that way, this is what's gonna help aid in doing those really thick weaves. Just gonna push the board right on up. do my saturation and then start pushing that product right on up. I'm just kind of taking the lightener all the way up because she is virgin, so I wanna make sure we get an overall global brightness out of this technique. But if you wanted to even create more ribbons, you could alternate how high up that lightener goes and maybe bring it down a little further if you wanted that depth. The overall goal with this technique too is to make sure that your lightener is nice and even in your application. So that's what's gonna help the lightener lift evenly. So I'm gonna continue on with the same V pattern in this entire back section. And I'm actually moving this, uh, starting the section about two inches from the side of her head and then just meeting right here in the center. Now, one of the reasons why I love this technique is because it takes about 30 minutes to get an entire head applied. This is great for someone that wants a lot of contrast, but they also want the subtlety to go with it. So this section right here is gonna be a really great example of how you can take half V section. Now you can alternate these patterns much to like I did with the bottom. We took it completely horizontal because I wanted brightness on the underside. 
but right here on this middle interior, I wanna keep a lot of depth in the center. But you can see how well this lightener just really glides on. It is a clay, but it has this really kind of creamy consistency, making it really easy to blend. One of the other things that I really love about this lightener is that it has that dual bond complex. So it has that inner and outer dual bond technology. So it's actually helping repair the hair as it's lifting. Now you do have the option to mix up this lightener at a one to two or a one to three with 20 or 30 volume developer. And personally, I really like clay lightener because you don't need any added tools like foil or papers or anything like that. This is literally gonna process open air beautifully and it's gonna give you lots of levels of lift and you can process this up to 45 minutes. So this does process relatively quick for a lightener. So now you can see here in the back, I've already made it almost towards the top here and this is my sixth section that I'm working on. So this is why I love this parting and sectioning technique because it just makes it go by so quickly, but you're gonna get a lot of global coverage from it. The other reason why I love this clay lightener is because you're gonna get up to eight levels of lift, which is pretty impressive for a clay lightener. Now for this horizontal section that I just created, I am gonna take a V section. So keeping the exterior a little bit higher where I paint and the interior here a little lower. Now the depth of your section is completely up to you, but this is just a, a little guideline for this technique specifically because we are taking these chunky highlights on the very surface here. So I personally like to have enough depth going on, especially with this beautiful of a canvas of hair that I'm working on today. Now, if you wanted more lightness and more brightness, you're gonna take smaller subsections. I also personally find that when you do a little bit of a tease here or you're using this board, you're actually helping create that rootedness, but really naturally towards the top. And you also notice that I'm stroking the product up and down, up and down. And this is so that way I make sure it's fully saturated on both sides and it's applied evenly. I'm also not worried about the lightener cross transferring onto the other hair. This is why we're doing that open air hair paint. Now, of course, if you wanted to get maximum lightness out of your end result, you could encapsulate it with a foil, but I find that it's really not necessary. Granted that you're gonna get up to eight levels of lift with this open air. Now for this very top section, just because I want a little bit more subtlety on the top and I just want a soft brightness, I really want those ribbons to kind of show through in the underside, I'm not gonna take a really chunky weave here. However, I am gonna still do something kind of deep, but a little bit more thinner pieces. So if you can kind of envision that, I have my depth here and then these pieces will just kind of veil over, just giving me a soft, subtle brightness throughout. So when she curls her hair, you're gonna see these really gorgeous ribbons on the underside kind of poking through. And I still wanna keep this nice and rooted. So I am gonna use my board. And for this final piece, I'm just gonna take it nice and evenly all the way up.
For my partings, I'm gonna be doing forward diagonal because she wears her hair away from her face. So I really want that brightness to show off when she curls her hair going away. So that way that blonde is sitting on the top. And since this is a really tiny section, I'm still taking that chunky weave, but whatever can kind of fit in that section. Still using my board, and I'm taking this section all the way up. Now for this section here, because it was a little bit wider, I wanna focus more on the brightness towards the face and keeping this depth here on the interior because this section marries with the other section. So you're gonna have a little bit of crossover. Now this is my very last section on this side. So this is the third piece. So again, less is more for this technique. But again, if you want that more brightened end result with an overall blonding effect, you can take thinner sections. Now that I have the sides completely done, I'm going to focus on this money piece here. So I'm gonna take this entire section and I'm actually gonna pinch it kind of in the middle here. Most of the time when you're doing hair painting, you're, we're holding a little further out, but because we have lots of little baby hairs, I wanna make sure I'm holding those nice and taut. So I'm gonna cinch this a little closer so I can make sure I have a nice even tension throughout. And I'm just gonna take a little bit of lightener on my brush, not too much. And I'm gonna focus applying here and then gradually moving towards the face. This is gonna help prevent those splotchy, lifted areas on these little baby hairs here. Less is more in, for this application. You just wanna lightly brighten her up. So definitely take your time when applying the hairline because this is the most important section that you'll ever do, because this is a section that your client's gonna see. And hair painting's very visual, so that's what I really like about it. What you see where you're painting is exactly where it's gonna brighten. So just keep that in mind as you start to do your application. Sometimes doing less is more. So now that I have that nice and detailed, there's no saturation on that backside, I'm gonna start pulling this down and applying a lot more onto my brush. So I am using my hands to go ahead and saturate these ends here. So you do wanna wear some gloves when doing this front hairline if you're not gonna use the board. And the reason why I didn't use the board is because I wanted to get that lightener pretty close to that hairline. So I'm gonna do the same exact thing, making sure I got all those little baby hairs and they're pulled or held evenly taut here. Now that all this detail is done, now we can go through and really saturate those mids and ends. I'm just using my hands to blend the underside, making sure that it's saturated through the ends, but I also wanna make sure that I have a nice even application. So always keep that in mind when using clay liner. So I just finished up the application and I'm loving this placement. And just keep in mind that balayage and hair painting is very visual. So you can almost see exactly where those ribbons of blonde's gonna live. And now we're just gonna process her for about 45 minutes, give it a check, and then she'll be ready for her final toner. So we just finished up her toner. I let her process for the full 45 minutes, took her back to the shampoo bowl, used Kenra moisturizing shampoo and conditioner, 
and then followed up with beige rabbit toner at a one to two mixing ratio with nine volume developer. And I let it process for just two minutes because the lift that we got was nice, even and absolutely beautiful. So I just wanted a little nice sheer tone left on the hair. So now I'm gonna give her a voluminous blowout using blow dry spray, perfect blowout, and then finish her off with some gorgeous curls using spray clay. And I can't wait to show you the final result. And here's the final result of these balayage highlights with a subtle money piece. So I really hope you enjoyed this hair tutorial and if you did, please give it a thumbs up, make sure to subscribe and be sure to check out our other hair tutorials right here on this channel and I will see you next time.